Hello and welcome to day six on this 30 day challenge to get comfortable in creating content for YouTube. So I got this amazing question uh, earlier today on how do you find love for what you do or how do you love what you do? And I usually hear references to fire uh, when I hear of love. And so there's a great analogy uh, in this uh, sense that if you want to start a fire, first you have to find a spark, then you need kindling to grow the fire, and then finally you need the fuel to keep everything burning. And so in like this first stage of finding the spark, I believe it's important to start with the why. Like why are you doing what you're doing? Uh, and I believe that the most amazing thing and the most important thing that you need to find for yourself is the intrinsic value in what you're doing. So, for example, as a like software programmer or software developer, I love, pro um, I love problem solving. And I like taking like technical challenges and like solving them with an algorithm or finding ways to make my life easier uh, through like software uh, uh, solutions. And uh, I believe that there's something different here. Like when, when you learn to love um, problem solving or making things better um, with code, there's uh, a reward that's internal and it's very different than like fame or fortune. It's not about um, learning to code so that I can like create the next Uber or Facebook and have an IPO and make billions of dollars. It's that I love being able to like sit in front of the computer every now and then and like um, uh, solve a challenge uh, and solve a problem. So that's uh, something that's followed me uh, and I, uh, throughout my life. And I find that even with other things I've gotten myself into, uh, like voice lessons, like uh, learning to love my own voice and uh, learning to create a resonant voice. I think there's like a lot of like satisfaction in like seeing how I've grown uh, vocally. Uh, and that's different from saying that I want to uh, play in front of Madison Square Garden or have uh, millions of dollars in ticket sales and record sales and you know, be able to um, launch like all of my different brands for from clothing um, uh, to uh, my own brand of water. And so, yeah, this, this thing here about the spark is like you need to find that one thing that keeps you coming back. Because if you don't have that, then you're just in a rat race and uh, every day is just going to be a struggle. Uh, so you need to find uh, that initial highlight for every day. The second step uh, our stage is being able to add the kindling. So usually when we're getting started or when I'm getting started something, I, I find that that's the most fragile stage and that's usually the point that like the haters and detractors uh, and like uh, can like easily like snuff you out. Uh, so being in a supportive environment, having a good coach or um, being in a group of friends uh, or doing a workshop where everybody's trying to grow uh, is really helpful and critical um, to growing because I think once uh, you develop a little competence uh, and you also are able to develop some confidence in what you're doing. So um, like as a developer, uh, once you've solved a, a few small problems, then you can start tackling bigger challenges. and. Uh, like for programming, I also find that like there are meetups, there are workshops, there are conferences, and there are like a ton of ways to find people who are also doing what you want to do. Uh, for YouTube here, uh, there are a lot of amazing groups I found online um, of other aspiring like YouTubers who want to uh, get on camera more and create more and succeed on the platform. And so. Uh, being around other people uh, who are also learning, I think also encourages you to grow. Uh, finally, I think after uh, you get to this stage of competence, the number one like enemy uh, to overall um, to overall like happiness and joy is uh, boredom. 
um, like if you allow yourself to become stagnant and you just like clock in, um, you know, you stop uh, and you stop growing. I think that's really when it's easy to like quit and uh, try to find like your next love. And in the case of software, I'm always like fascinated that there are um, uh, several ways that we can make a program better. Like we can make something uh, scale out so that we solve similar challenges really easily. We can make it work faster. We can try to serve more users. We can increase the amount of load. So there, there are ways to take uh, something that looks really simple uh, and uh, complicate you know, uh, uh, make it really complicated uh, and robust, reliable, uh, and all the you know other adjectives that um, uh, com uh, computer software um, salesmen love to use. And so that's kind of like what I, I look at here also for YouTube is um, constantly trying to uh, make sure that I challenge myself from an artistic standpoint. So right now, uh, my goal is to get comfortable in front of the camera and be able uh, to tell my message and you know, not get too self-conscious about like what's on screen and how I look and how I sound and whether I have too many utterances. And then like next stage, then I'll start worrying about editing and then uh, learning you know, how to uh, cut better and create uh, a better sense of continuity uh, in the editing room. And then after that, then I might start layering in B-roll and titles and text and um, uh, and then from there, then we get into uh, understanding how video creation interacts with the platform. So there are always ways uh, to grow and in increase uh, our, uh, um, yeah, the, the amount of uh, impact we have on the world. And I feel like that's uh, my process for like uh, cultivating love uh, for what I do. And I feel like that's something that other people can do as well. So uh, if I have any other advice, I'd say um, that um, the goal really should be able to focus on the task at hand and you know, to really do what you're doing um, and finding the love there. Um, if you're a pianist, just even like learning to appreciate how your fingers glide across the keys to play scales. Uh, I've, uh, I've heard of classical musicians who can spend uh, hours upon hours just like practicing the basics. And I've, I've learned that that's, uh, it's not to them a chore, it's because uh, they've learned to love uh, the way their fingers flow on a keyboard. So that's um, the big message I have here is um, being, because you're focused on a task at hand and you're finding that intrinsic joy in what you're doing, you no longer have to worry about the future. You can be at the, uh, in the present and you can have an enjoyment of the present. And ultimately, uh, that's my bottom line, is that I look for things that I enjoy, you know, here and now that have great rewards in the future. So that's my message and I'm sticking to it.